Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles! Sorry, I'm going to be a bit hyper today. I've just been binge-watching Klaus Kellerman's World of Tanks videos, and his attitude is kind of infectious. Anyway, today, for your YouTube viewing entertainment pleasure, we have a double-action replay featuring the perspective from tanks on opposite sides in the same battle. To begin with, we have this guy, Mauro SFM in the Tier 9 British medium tank, the Centurion Mark 7. And on the opposite team, in the Skoda T-50, we have... Oh my god! It's Klaus Kellerman! What's he doing here? Klaus! What are you doing on the tank, Klaus? Klaus, can I get on the tank? Klaus. Klaus, can I join you on the tank? Let me join you on the tank, Klaus. It's a big tank, Klaus. There's room for two. There's loads of space. Go on. Go on, Klaus. Let me be in your gang. Let me get on the tank with you. Come on, Klaus. What's the worst that could happen? Klaus, can I get on the tank? Go on, Klaus. Please, Klaus. Klaus? Fuck you! Klaus doesn't like other people on this tank. I never liked you anyway, Klaus. So you're the villain of this video. That's right, Klaus. You're the villain. The hero of this video is Mauro in the Centurion. That's right. Good, honest British tank. Of course, our hero and our villain are both rushing for the exact same spot on the map, so there's likely to be some hot, sweaty hero-on-villain action before too soon. The light tanks immediately rush to see who can get up to the top of the hill first, but hold on, wait, what's that? Look, over there. It's that Kellerman asshole. There he is. He wouldn't let me on his tank. What are you doing, Klaus? Oh, you're picking on the light tanks, are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I wouldn't expect any less. He is the villain of the piece, after all. Go on, Kellerman, pick on something your own size. Yeah! <laughs> D didn't work out too well for him, did it? Trying to penetrate the side of a Tier 8 Soviet medium tank with APCR ammunition, what were you thinking? Speaking of what the hell were you thinking, as uh, Klaus reloads and looks for the opportunity to inflict more villainy on defenceless enemy tanks, just have a look at the minimap. To the rear of Klaus's position, up to the north there, where the tank destroyers are camping. That's not a tank destroyer, is it? <laughs> no. It's a Japanese Super Heavy. It's a no-ho. You know, after watching this replay, from both perspectives, I have come to the inescapable conclusion that Japanese Super Heavy tank drivers are all glue sniffers. <laughs> it's the only explanation that makes any kind of sense. Klaus, look, look at that, look at that guy. What, you're busy? Oh, sorry. Okay, now, now, look at that guy. Look at the oh ho Look where he is. What do you think of that, Klaus? Well, what the fuck is that guy doing up there? I've never witnessed anything like this. I'll tell you what's going on back there, Klaus. The answer is actually surprisingly simple. The IKV-90B, the tank destroyer camping at the back, has a big old pot of glue strapped to the top of his turret. And the oh ho smelled it from the other side of the map, and he's driving up there to get a really good sniff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Does that make sense, Klaus? Is it all becoming clear now? Klaus, what are you doing? Oh, I see what you're trying to do. But you're not going to make it up there in a Skoda T-50. Not without a push. Well, while you're extricating yourself from this situation, let's go and see what our hero's been getting up to. Marrow's situation doesn't actually look that bad at the moment. I mean, he's in a top-tier medium tank. And he can mostly go hold down here, mostly, and his turret is fairly bouncy, and he does have a fantastic gun. But he's going to run out of teammates very, very quickly. To be fair, he does have some fantastic artillery support, for the moment. But the tank destroyers camping at the back of the map behind him, the Yag Panther II and the Yag Tiger 88, down in the bottom southeast corner of the map are almost 100% ineffective until the enemy team have already taken the hill and are pushing down from it on this side. They can't actually shoot anybody on the other side of those rocks. And with the exception of the lone T-20, who did manage to put a shot into the villain of the piece earlier on, Maro is now completely alone. And so he backs off. And hopefully now he can start to get some support from those two camping tank destroyers at the back. The problem, and it's not really a problem when you think about it, but, well, the T-20 is still alive, up on the hill. And so none of those enemy tanks on the far side of the rocks want to push up past the rocks, because none of them want to be the one to take a hit in the flank from the T-20 up there. 
Of course, this means those tank destroyers to the rear are going to continue to be almost 100% ineffective. In fact, the Yak Tiger 88 only does 251 damage this entire game. Yeah, really, 251 damage. From a grand total of two shots fired this entire game, he gets to click his left mouse button twice, just sitting at the back waiting for tanks that are never going to come to him. So Mauro moves up, because he's got nothing better to do. All those enemy tanks, afraid of getting shot at by a T-20, and some, again, very, very useful artillery support. But hang on a second. It's that Kellerman asshole again! He's back! Klaus, bugger off, this isn't about you. Stop trying to hog the limelight. <laughs> You're not funny. It's at around about this point where our glue-sniffing friend in the Oho detects the aroma of paint thinners coming from the direction of Mauro in the Mark 7 Centurion and finally arrives where he should have been a couple of minutes ago. At this point, Klaus is pretty sure that the writing is on the wall for Mauro Centurion because he can see the Brigetto 43 sneaking around behind him. And this is actually good news for the driver of the Yag Tiger 88 at the back because he now gets to fire his one and only damaging shot of the game. <laughs> right before Mauro takes out the, not quite as sneaky as he thought he was, driver of the Italian medium tank. And after finishing off the P-43, Mauro helps himself to the IS as well. And bang, that shot right there, that 251 damage against the Oho. That was the Yag Tiger's sole contribution to this battle. Thanks for turning up. Couldn't have done this without you. So what's that Kellerman asshole up to? Well, he quite rightly judged that that lot should be entirely capable of dealing with a critically damaged Centurion. And there are developments brewing on the other side of the map. The base isn't looking particularly healthy. There's a Lerva, a T-10 and an IS making a push, but it, well, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be that critical. There's a Type 4 Heavy over there. Ah, uh, yes, but this is a Japanese Super Heavy. And as we know, drivers of Japanese Super Heavies are all glue-sniffing idiots. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> You're not going to believe this. Um, for now, however, because he's the villain of the piece, Klaus is attempting to save his artillery. He's going to shotgun that Lerva but is probably not going to survive the engagement. Then again, the Lerva's not going to survive either, because Klaus is going to finish him off. He is going to kill the artillery, but he's not going to live to celebrate. Now then, on the far side of the hill over there, you can see the Type 4 Heavy chasing after the pot of glue strapped to the front of the IS, and completely ignoring the T-10 Heavy Tank sitting on his ass. What the fuck are those guys doing there? What? I don't even understand this game anymore. You and me both, Klaus. You and me both. You've definitely got this T-10, though. Flank and shot, and it's not terribly well armoured. Well, you'd think so, wouldn't you? <laughs> two out of three shots. First two, straight into the side of a Soviet heavy tank. Nope. <laughs> and the only shot that penetrated was the one fired into the front. Oh, world of tanks, go home, you drunk. Let's see how the hero of the tale has been getting on, shall we? Well, you know, actually not too bad. Although his position here is really only stable as long as that T-20 on the hill stays alive. Unfortunately, it's at exactly this point where the SU-100M1 over there decides that he's sick and tired of waiting for the glue-sniffing Japanese Super Heavy to get up there and deal with the Tier 7 Medium. Goes up to do the job himself. And Mauro tries. He did put a shot into the side of the SU-100M1 as it went up the hill, but it cost him two shots in the face from the high-explosive fired by our little glue-sniffing Japanese Super Heavy friend over there. So, unfortunately, I mean, I'm sure he'd love to help out even further, but for the moment, the T-20 on the hill is on his own. He can't go up there to help him directly. Well, well, he could, but it would be suicide. He only has 300 health remaining, and he would have to give the side of his tank to, well, that lot. Plus, whatever tank destroyers are camped on the ridge behind them. The T-20 is there in chat, yelling for help, which is perfectly understandable given the circumstances he's found himself in, but surely he understands that there is nobody in a position to help him. He either needs to defend himself, or get out of that position. It was a good spot, and I'm sure Mauro was very happy that the T-20 managed to survive up there for as long as he did, but now he's sharing that spot with an enemy Tiger and SU-100M1, so it's no longer a good spot, and he's dead, and it's all Mauro's fault, isn't it? Yeah, of course. Oh, it's that Kellerman asshole again. What's he up to? Oh, look, there's the IS. The IS that killed the Type 4 Heavy. <laughs> it doesn't matter that the IS is dead. He will always be the IS that killed the Type 4 Heavy. With the cunning use of a pot of glue. And there's the Stuart and Mill. Now, he could have a very, very big 128mm gun. 
Uh, but he doesn't. It's the 105. So, yeah, he's no threat whatsoever. And he's dead. So, anyway, Klaus, since you are the villain of the piece, I think the audience would like to know what your evil intentions are. What, exactly, is your plan? Well, yeah, okay, I can see you reloading, but beyond the immediate future, getting your gun reloaded, and by the way, I don't know if you've noticed, but your loader appears to be suffering from a broken fingernail. You might want to use your first aid kit. But beyond your immediate future, what exactly are your wicked intentions? You don't want to go and fight the Centurion. He seems like a bit of a double-hard bastard. <laughs> yes, we noticed that too. Oh, you're going after the artillery instead. Oh, Klaus. Seriously? He's supposed to be the villain of the piece. Only the good guys go hunting artillery. We may start to like you. Well, there's one. Oh, by the way, have you... Oh, and there's the other one. Okay, just a second. We're going to finish this guy off. There goes the Crusader SP. So there's no more artillery support for poor old Mauro. But have you noticed that the enemy Jagdtiger 88 is still alive? In fact, yep, there he is. He's just been spotted. So, well, he's probably not going to stay alive for too much longer. Now, remember, this guy has only done 251 damage in this entire game. In fact, he's only fired his gun twice. And I don't know how long ago it was, but it was a shot that he put into the Oho earlier. So he has quite literally, since then, done absolutely nothing other than sit in that corner of the map. Now remember, the next time you hit that random battle queue in World of Tanks, guys like that are going to be on your team. <laughs> Enjoy the game, have fun. Oh, I think the writing's on the wall for our hero. He's not quite the last tank left alive on his team. But it's only a matter of time. Oh, Mauro. Poor sweet Mauro. There's only you and the Yag Panther 2 left. Where did it all go so horribly, horribly wrong? I dare say there are going to be more than a few people in the comments, because these World of Tanks videos do seem to attract a lot of haters, who would say that your first mistake was installing World of Tanks. But we're not going to be that petty. We're just going to wait and see how long it takes for that Yag Panther 2 to die and for Mauro to be the last tank left alive on his team, because it does seem fairly inevitable at this point. Although he is going to make them pay for it. And, oh, it's that Caliban asshole! Come on! Mauro! Get him! Put a sh Hey, Klaus! Mauro's the last tank left alive on his team. What do you think of that? Is he the only guy left? What happened to his team? <laughs> what happened to his That's a... That's a funny question. Oh yeah, a yeah, good one. What happened to his team? <laughs> He's played World of Tanks and I asked what happened to his team as if like to, it's surprising that they're all dead. <laughs> hey guys, what happened to his team? They're all dead. That's, that's strange. <laughs> yeah, okay, Klaus, you do actually make a fairly good point. Poor old Mauro over there is in a bit of a pickle. He knows there are three enemy tanks remaining. He knows he's a one-shot kill, but these two guys are both one-shot kills as well. But where's the third enemy tank? Now, he suspects that the T-28 prototype is probably working its way around him. Otherwise, what are these two waiting for? And you can see the point where he realises it's right there. And he's going to get the T-28 prototype. And he might have gotten away with it too, if it wasn't for that Caliban asshole. Big thank you today, not just to Mauro, for putting up such a stiff resistance in his Centurion Mark VII, but also to Klaus Kellerman, without whom today's video would not have been possible, because he did in fact send me both of the replays featured in today's video. He contacted Mauro after the battle to congratulate him on a well-fought game, commiserate him on the loss, and beg for the replay. <laughs> and I'm glad he did, uh, because this was a great video to do. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you enjoyed the little Klaus Kellerman voice clips scattered throughout the video, which I shamelessly ripped off from his YouTube channel, uh, you might enjoy more of the same on his own YouTube channel. Link down below in the video description. Be warned, however, he is a massive asshole, right? I wasn't joking. He really is. But he's a funny asshole, and funny will do. Anyway, that's it for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, Klaus. And as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.